is the transfer carousel and how it looks at the SEC because I am of the opinion that the SEC could have the worst quarterback play that we've seen in some time. Kyle Trask doesn't really do it for us. Um, K.J. Costello is playing in Mike Leach's offense, but it's still a Mississippi State team that's never played in Mike Leach's offense. Jimbo Fisher's got Kellen Mond, but Kellen Mond has never done it for us in that way. Miles Brennan, we'll have to wait and see. J.T. Daniels could be good. Jamie Newman could be good, but even when Jamie Newman was good, he didn't pass Oh, you didn't call him store brand Cam Newton. That's what I was waiting for. Oh, right, well, okay. I mean, but store, brand, store brand Cam Newton might actually be backing up somebody this year in his final year of eligibility. That's weird. Joey Gatewood at Kentucky, coming from Auburn, is interesting. And then Mac Jones is probably going to be the starter to open the season, at the very least, for Alabama. And I'm not sold on Brian Maurer. I'm not sold on Harrison Bailey at Tennessee. I mean, I continue to look around, and I just don't see a, a, a name-brand dude. The name-brand dudes are Clemson, Ohio State, even Oklahoma, right? Even at Texas, right? Even Spencer Sanders. Spencer Sanders might be the third-best quarterback in the SEC if he played in it, which should tell you a lot, right? But also add in there, because Malzahn, Kalen Newton is the preferred walk-on grad transfer at Auburn, a Howard man, right? Yep, played for Brennan Marin. Exactly. His offensive coordinator was Brennan Marin. And at the time, what I love, Brennan was developing and running his go-go offense, which looks a lot like the oopty oop But the way that they can run their power run schemes and the way that they will get off the ball and the easy concepts that he teaches, it just goes, right? And I wonder how much of that offense will bleed into Gus's offense because Brennan's offense is – a derivative of Gus's offense absolutely. and what they might absolutely be able to do with those wide receivers that can stretch the field and can fly all with Kalen Newton having his hands on the controls, which is another way of saying I'm not, I'm not interested in Bo Nix this year, except to say, I think that he's going to regress. I think that Kalen Newton's going to take his job. And I think that Bo Nix is going to be into the transfer portal at a time when it ain't necessarily the best thing to be in the transfer portal because Bo Nix hasn't shown much of anything to anybody outside of Auburn that would say, we would rather, we really want that kid to play football for us. Because if you're looking at the market for a, a kid like Bo Nix, it ain't going to be the market for a kid like JT Daniels. It's not going to be the market for a kid like KJ Costello. You know, the idea of a Joe Burrow experience for him is kind of left because Joe Burrow hadn't had an opportunity to start football games before he came to LSU to start football games. And while Gus has doubled down last year in saying that Bo Nix is going to win a bunch of championships and a bunch of games at Auburn, yeah, man, uh, Minnesota beat you in the Outback Bowl with your quarterback who didn't look great at all. And there's a reason as to why Chad Morris decided, I want Kalen Newton in here. You know, I, I want a kid in here that understands, one, what to do with his legs when the pocket breaks down, but also can complete some passes. I also added this continues, man, coach is such a small world. Head coach at Howard, Ron Prince. Ask Kansas State fans how they feel about Ron Prince. It ain't going to have good things to say. It ain't going to have good things to say. By the way, Kalen's story is pretty cool, too, because, you know, he, he he's almost – it's hard to say it's a hindrance when you watch him play, but he's incredibly bow-legged to a point where it was – if you know, I'm, I'm serious. Like, you'll notice it when you watch him, like – I saw it when I watched him play because Brennan was coaching him at Har Howard. And if you can actually find, he has like a, and I'm trying to find what it's called, but it was actually like a hindrance, like a. I can't wait to see how you talk yourself out of, out of this bow leg comment. Yeah. What was that? That I can't wait to see how you talk yourself out of this bowleg comment. Well, no, he is. It's 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 not like it's not like when you say someone's bowlegged because they're clumsy or whatever, or they're just not good on their feet. I mean, he legitimately has like it's like a birth defect. Do you do you do you know? Do you 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 don't know, huh? Hmm. Bowlegged folks, flat-footed folks, none of that. You don't know none of that. Yeah, I, okay. I don't. I, I, okay, all right. That's 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 between segments talk. That's what that is. Okay. That's what that is. That's uh, that's 
that's the kind of stuff that I would fill you in on as a true freshman at the University of Tulsa. Okay. Because. Well, see, yeah, no, I'm looking at this purely on like a overcoming a physical disability. Uh huh. I'm so lost right now. <laughs> that, hey, look, that's okay. That's okay. Some of us grew up around HBCUs. Some of us did not. I, Two Americas. I, Two Americas. Some of us went to Langston for football games. Some of us went to Stillwater. Some I, of us knows exactly where Jackson State and Alcorn State are on the map. Some of us say Mississippi State and Ole Miss are the only ones that exist. <laughs> so these conversations are, are a lot of fun when you take into account just the jokes that... And- See, see, now I'm embarrassed because I feel like, like, I was just trying to make a point about. Oh, I know. Because they did, there was a feature story written about it, and I'm trying to find it. I, 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 look, I read the undefeated every day. So then you saw the story I'm talking about. Oh yeah, I just like watching you over here swimming. Let's see, that's. It's, it's, hey, look, I don't get a whole lot of those. I know all kinds of stuff about your culture. I know all kinds of stuff about my culture. When the two are parallel, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. You know, like, <laughs> uh, like uh, uh, what was it? I was showing uh, Laurel uh, bits of He Got Game last night. And uh, I was telling her about Rick Fox and, and Ray Allen. And, you know, Jesus Shuttlesworth and whatnot. Being on the campus at Tech U. AKA Eli, and how that whole posse just showed up saying, Hey, Jesus. Yeah, man. And she was like, She was embarrassed and in a good way. But, like, yeah, she had not seen He Got Game. So, that, that's probably a thing we're going to have to do this weekend. Yeah, you got to watch that movie. Yeah. He Got Game. She hadn't seen White Man Can't Jump. So, we got her we gotta caught up on that. Uh, probably going to get her caught up on. Love and basketball, uh, poetic justice. Above the rim is streaming. What about blue chips? <sighs> She's not missing anything. <laughs> that's that's a sports junkie movie, right? Yeah, it's not essential right. to the it culture. It is not as near as good a movie. It's it's not essential to the culture. It's not. It's not in the same stratosphere as white men can't jump. Nah, it's not. That's essential to the culture, right? He got game is essential to the culture. It's true. Friday Night Lights essential to the culture. You know, play him both ways. He ain't going to break. See, and I'm not a fan of that movie. Explain yourself. Because I like the book. I, I like the book, too. But I like the book better than the movie. I just I'm felt out. like I they left I, out I don't, characters I don't. in the book. Because I know why they did. There were characters that didn't make the movie that I was like, man, they were like my favorite characters in the book. I, the whole final chapter of Dallas Carter needed to be a movie. Yes. The whole final chapter. Because that's, that's Booker T. <laughs> I was also kind of cynical when I watched that movie. So it's the same way like when I watched The Blind Side for the first time. And I was like, man, I know this story. This is bubblegum. You, you protect his blind side. Stop. Run the damn ball, Bert. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, look, I've, I've seen them all. I've I know. I've memorized them all. I've read the books and seen the movies, okay? By the way, the thing to love about Friday Night Lights is just how they did that state championship game. The commentary, the way they shot it like an action movie. Yeah, okay, the way, the, I will they, say The that. entrances, my God. You want to talk about me getting charged up? Because that's what I'm talking about. Like, when we talk about this bow leg conversation, right? When I talk about two Americas, there's the way that the Permian Panthers entered the Astro Dome, and there's the way that the Dallas Carter Cowboys entered the Astro Dome. And let me tell you something. I'm from the Dallas Cowboys part of it. I'm from there, where you walking in talking about barking. And the way that you style on people is not by, you know, celebrating the end zone. It's by taking pictures in the end zone. You got organized choreography with this. You got dudes talking about fun ride, huh, big boy? You know what I mean? Like you, so you're saying basically the there's, there's, there's being the Texas Longhorns and then there's the going up the tunnel at Texas and coming down, shooting the pistols. 
like Miami style? Who? Miami? Hey, yo, man, look, there's, 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 there's a reason why I always remind people that Texas is the last all-white team to win a national championship. 1969, Texas Longhorns. Look it up, okay? And it wasn't long after that that you know what, you know what Daryl Royal told his running backs coach, his freshman coach? You got one job. Secure Earl Campbell. I love this. Is, I love these. I love these conversations because it's, uh, you know, it's, I'm watching Friday Night Lights going. Now the team, the team to root for is in red. That's that's the team to like. I know they're the villains. I know they're the heels in this story. But once you know who that team was, and what they did to get there. Do you ever find yourself doing that in other sports movies? Because I've done that before, too. I'm always like, dude, I want to, that's my squad. Oh, yeah, because I'm a natural heel. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's my energy. No. I'm trying to think, it might have been any given Sunday. I was like, dude, that team's awesome. I would have, I like. The Sharks? Yeah, well, the Sharks are cool. Which team? Which team? It, but, about? like, they're one of the teams they played. I feel like I was like, I, I'd probably roll with that squad. They were Trying to, I love the like made up teams in that movie, and I, I forget it's been a while since I watched it. Hey, this movie is wild underrated for two reasons. One, uh, the football was real. Two, Barry Switzer on the call. It's true. People forget Barry Switzer as an analyst is the best. It's awesome, and in that booth they had the rival analyst, which never happens, right? The Homer and the Homer together yeah. calling the game, right? I want more of that. I, that, I want to say that's Oliver Stone up there, too. No, it is an Oliver Stone movie. No, no, it, no. I mean, like, in the booth next to Barry Switzer. It might have been. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I haven't watched it in a while. And then, but, you know, my man gets his eye ripped out. And, oh, yeah. See, and the that way was that the, they tell the, the audience, the, he has something in his eye. Well, that was Dallas, right? It was the yes, Knights. Dallas Knights. That's yeah. right. Yeah, see? Barry in a gold blazer in a red button-down shirt. Some of the color choices, the color schemes of the uniforms, I did have some beef with. Flag them. on the play. It's coming back. No, I'm here for The that. Sharks, I'm not going to lie. The Sharks are probably one of my favorite fictional sports franchises. I like the, the whole concept. It makes sense. Being in Miami, it's kind of like the anti-Dolphins. Like It's kind of like if the Raiders and the Dolphins had a baby. Uh, Christina Pagniacci is, is, is an underrated character. Because she ain't Rachel Phelps, right? Right. But she is trying to get it in and get it done. Also, the way that they had that character strut through the, the locker room and, like, just calling the shots everywhere she goes. And these dudes is like, here, where's your hand so I can eat out of it, please? You know? I don't date players. Sets a bad example. Walk out. Bad. Here for it. 